The Honda CRF 250L scored high for being easy to ride and forgiving while I learned to ride again. Off the road, it is fun. But as I have increased in skill, I have also increased in speed. I found myself wanting to do more and push the bike farther. Unfortunately, the suspension on this bike seems to be for looks only. With the exception of the preload on the spring, it's not adjustable, nor is it built for someone over 200 pounds. It is soft and makes cornering difficult. Even some of the smallest jumps can end with the bike bottoming out. The power is extremely lacking. Getting the front wheel up without the clutch is impossible. Coming out of a corner, it is equally difficult to get up to speed so you can clear a jump. And then there's the weight. It seems almost unreal that a bike that looks so capable can be so heavy and incapable. On the road, it's not much to brag about either, with a top speed of 75 miles per hour. I do give it high marks in the styling department though. The bike looks great as soon as you replace that tail light monstrosity that it comes with stock. All in all, with all its faults, I love my CRF 250L, but it's time to move up. I've just outgrown it. This is a stupid thing to record, but it's the morning of. I don't feel like doing this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I can't wait. Let's go. I'm gonna go get some breakfast first. So it's the morning of. Scott and I are gonna go get breakfast, and then we're going to get the bike. Say, Scott. Hey. Hey. You'll be famous. It's gonna be a good weekend, buddy. It's already been good so far. Although, I really do miss Carol. Should have brought her. All right, we're at Go AZ Motorcycles in Scottsdale, Arizona, where uh, we're about to pick up my new bike. So let's do this. on the other side if you want to go check it out. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick tour around the facilities, show you our storage basement, um, where we keep a lot of our bikes, kind of show you the test track where they do some of the uh, training at, go through the service department, and then we'll end up in the delivery room where Joe's brand new 500 EXC ATM is waiting. All right? Let's do it. All right. Mike, aren't you glad you get to be a part of this? Yeah. yeah, we got the first responders event going on today. Around September 11th every year, we try to do uh, an appreciation for all of our servicemen and women. Uh, outstanding, I'm a Marine. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and our, our owner is a Marine, too. When I heard that, I was hoping to get a discount, but I was already getting a good deal. Besides, they were donating $100 from the sale of my bike the first responders. Did you get that code? No, I didn't. Damn it. <laughs> you turned it away. <laughs> you gotta get the code, dude. This is you This should be like the most elaborate bike heist ever. Yeah, there's, a, there's a marine street glide right there. That is a couple of painted bikes. This is bad. <laughs> Go AZ has a lot of inventory and they do a really good job protecting it in this amazing basement. Security was outstanding and getting in was like getting into Fort Knox. So right now they're keeping all the Harley Davidsons down here for the new uh, Harley Davidson of Scottsdale building. And they're gonna have their own storage facility over there. So once all those Harleys get out of here, we're gonna have a lot more room for our stuff. We got you know, a couple of Aquila RSV 4RFs right there. We only made 200 of those. Wow. Um, that's number three of them. So a rare bike, huh? Yeah, really rare. What an amazing collection of bikes we found down there, including a familiar one. Hey, those look familiar. <laughs> this video really doesn't do justice to the size and scope of this basement where they keep all their inventory. It was amazing. 
there was rare bikes and there were so many different new bikes and different types of bikes, uh, even Harley bikes from the Harley Davidson shop. It's a good day to buy a bike. Equally impressive was the test track above the basement. Forward's basement. Uh, this is where they do events like Bob's Biker Blast um, every year. It's a huge event for us, it brings in thousands of people. I could imagine the carnival atmosphere that must surround some of the events they put on on this test track and couldn't wait to come and see one for myself. A little slide through the service department. That's Sonic back there working on a little guy's KTM. Uh, probably one of the best KTM mechanics you'll ever find. Mike made a pretty bold statement about Sonic being the best KTM mechanic there is. Okay. We'll see. They're really very Ducati. Big box right there. I really had a good time checking out all of the facilities that GoAZ had. And while the tour was cool, I was really getting a little impatient. I was ready to see my new bike. There she is. She is. Uh, Pro Ben, PPM, Bark Busters. Slick looking bike. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's not going to look this nice in a couple of days, though. After going over the bike with me, showing me the hand guards and the custom skid plate I asked for, Mike went ahead and had me sign some papers that basically said the bike was put together correctly, and then brought me some swag, including a KTM toolkit. Yeah, so a nice speed Allen wrench there. So a really nice pair of pliers. Um, some sockets. Getting the toolkit was a nice surprise, and then it was off the finance. This is Brad, and he's the dirty finance guy. I'm the dirty guy. <laughs> well, I don't know if you had to call him dirty. <laughs> we know how this goes. Do they still make printers like that? Or is that like really old? No, they still make How do you get that service? Do you have to like use a time machine? It's like made my garbage. After giving Brandon a hard time about his old printer, which took forever by the way to print out the contract, Brandon went over the terms of the contract and before long it was time to sign. The big signature. The big one. Let's see if you can check. I know, it's kind of expensive. It's kind of expensive. Well, I got one signature, so I just imprint like, that. And yeah, we can, right. we can make this happen with or without you. <laughs> After shaking hands, I took the bike for a short ride, and then we loaded it up on the truck and headed home. So far, the uh, experience with the KTM is I rode it on the uh, highway for a minute, probably put about uh, five miles on it. And then uh, we put it in the back of the truck, brought it all the way out to uh, Sierra Vista, about a three hour drive, and now it won't start. So there's my really awesome, cool bike that really won't do anything. We're trying to get it started. Uh, the battery's almost dead, so no more electric start. Kickstart is not as easy as it looks. <laughs> So, uh, needless to say, my first experience with this bike is not making me happy.